Now, I've heard you speak in the presentation you gave here about poverty, and a few moments ago we were talking about poverty, and uh, last night about the difficulty, uh, about the inability so far to have poverty defined as a class, as a protected mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. I think probably we Americans are really reluctant to talk about class. Um, some do, but generally speaking, it's not discussed here. And even though most people will describe themselves as middle class in America, no matter how rich they are, um, and sometimes no matter how far down the economic ladder they are, it's just not part of our discussion and discourse. Mm -hmm. How do you get people to, to talk about this, this economic divide among us? To me, it's just as difficult a subject to get people to talk about as talking about race. Mm -hmm. We are all reluctant to talk about race. Um, and we're reluctant to talk about poverty because it forces us to really make judgment on whether we really need to reach out and help. I've never seen African Americans uh, as disturbed as uh, in a session we had once where we were talking about taxing people more mm -hmm. to provide assistance for poor people, mm -hmm. uh, taxing them to provide health care or taxing them to provide housing. Um, African Americans can be as disturbed as whites in uh, discussions that talk about uh, providing assistance for poor people. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and yet I don't think we are going to be able to really address our ills un until we get so we can do that. Is how do we get to that point? I, I don't know how we can do it unless we just continue to bring this to the attention of everybody. Mm -hmm. But you know, as you say, there there is this resistance, both because people imagine having a concern for people lower down the ladder than we are requires some sacrifice on our part mm -hmm. that we're not prepared to make, or because they say, gee, I, I did make it, and there must be something wrong with those people. They're not able to come up to the standard I've achieved. Those are, are, are two uh, reasons that folk might advance for why they don't uh, want to help or don't want to talk about poor people, but another one could be just disdain for people who are poor. Mm -hmm. And I, I fear that that is there among a lot of people. Something wrong with being poor. Always yeah. has been. And, and, and uh, God didn't bless them. Or they didn't do what they needed to do to get out from the, the uh, barriers that they had to face. Or they're just not our kind. But you know, almost all African Americans who go back two, three generations in this country were incredibly poor, mm -hmm. almost all. Mm -hmm. And yet today we are, you know, about two thirds doing pretty well and only mm -hmm. a third mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in desperate poverty. What accounts for us having done that well, uh, have overcome that something wrong? Uh, why? Is it okay for us to have overcome it and not okay for us to think about others overcoming it in the future? That's a good question, but it, it's there. And uh, I think we'll, we'll likely be there. But um, we got the two-third uh, uh, group through a lot of efforts that were made uh, by you and others to, during the civil rights era. And we opened up a lot of opportunities. and. It's amazing today to see the number of blacks who are in what I would call non-traditional position. Uh, getting them to go the extra mile and opening up opportunities for others is going to be a major challenge. Uh, but to me, it's still possible. And it's one of the things we keep, keep working on. And I think it could be as painless as it was for us to move from what was it, 10 percent or less, mm -hmm. to the two-thirds now? Yeah. And so uh, I, I hope there is a commitment by our leaders today to ensure that the poor, whatever their race really, uh, are provided opportunities to enjoy the 
recruits of, of America. It seems to me that there's not a great across-the-board commitment to that among leadership figures. That it strikes me that there's an enormous influence on increasing the middle class by creating additional opportunities for the middle class rather than bringing other people into the middle class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it also appears to me, and I, I want to ask you if, if, this, if you think this is true, that there are people in this large middle class who say, I don't have to help other people. I'm demonstrating to other people by my own example. So the fact that I'm successful by itself is enough contribution for me to make. I don't have to give money to the NAACP, mm -hmm. or the Legal mm -hmm. Defense mm -hmm. Fund. I don't have to join the links. I don't have to do anything. I'm, I, I am. And that's it. What do you say to those people? Well, that they got where they are because someone else stopped and provided assistance. No, I did it because I'm genius, I'm brilliant, yeah. I'm hardworking, I'm yeah. clever. I, there was a period when, despite how great or brilliant people were, when they couldn't advance. Well, that without. was way back then. This is today. Well, I'm, I got where I am on my own merits, you know, lifted myself up by my own bootstraps. Yeah, they, so they say that, a lot of them even today, and yet we all have to appreciate that uh, no one really advanced without someone else providing assistance. They may not buy that, but uh, to me that's, that's true. Um, I like to approach problems like this from, to me, a legal and a moral perspective. I think morally there is an obligation. However one reached his or her uh, condition to really reach out and help others to escape. And I always approach it uh, from that perspective as well. And I think that uh, constitutionally or legally that there are obligations to provide assistance for the poor. And, uh, and, and third, I think we really help ourselves when we help the poor. Uh, if all people, as I know Martin Luther King said, are provided opportunities and are free, then all of us can feel free. I think that the moral responsibility is pretty well understood, even mm -hmm. if it's not obeyed. Mm -hmm. But the constitutional responsibility doesn't seem to be there. How do you get that there? Well, it isn't there yet. Uh, that's what I was talking about last night, that we need to help evolve constitutional principles that will ensure that there will be no discrimination against people because of their poverty status. And that's something we will continue to, to work on. But I think we will get there just like I think uh, they're good and others work to ensure that race was removed as a barrier to uh, opportunity. And I, and I think we aren't going to get very far in this country until we eliminate uh, poverty as a, as a barrier to opportunity.